Hi everybody, my name is David Summerflack. I'm a digital marketing specialist with about 20 years experience and I'm online at www.dms.blue. In this video, I wanted to talk about a very common question that I see from business owners and new entrepreneurs all the time. How do I find someone who is experienced enough and professional enough that they can help me not just build me a website, but actually help me achieve my business goals and objectives. So in this video, I want to talk about how to find your freelance fit and also address some other key concerns that come along with that. So let's go over some of these slides. So how do you find your freelance fit? Well, first of all, business owners need to be online today. You need to have a professional online presence that works on your modern phone, as well as on your PC or laptop or Kindle or tablet or whatever. So you need to be online today and you need to attract more customers, especially in a post COVID-19 reality now where you could really be losing money if you're not at the top of Google search results or if you can't accept payments online and offer the content that your ideal consumers want to see. So how can you tell a professional who can really help you as opposed to a neighborhood hobbyist or somebody who's just desperate to get money? Here are some tips based on my experience. Number one, you want to look at experience in their background or let's just say background they should have experience with working for profit focused business owners meaning they should have worked with professional established businesses just like yours before on their website they should have testimonials or references from past clients that are easily verifiable they should show photos of real people who, you know, not just male models and female models, but they should look like real people with their full names, at least in some cases, their contact information should be maybe some videos of real people, a way to get in touch with them if you want to learn more. So if you see testimonials from examples such as, boy, David did a great job, TJ in, in, in Oakdale or something, well, the TJ could be anybody. If the person looks completely flawless, like a male model from Baywatch or something, that's probably not a real business owner. And even if it is, you should be able to verify their identity or get in touch with them somehow. So for example, I show uh, testimonials from real people with their real photos. In many cases, you can click on a link and actually see their email addresses or their place of business or go to their company websites and contact them. And if somebody contacts me, I'm happy to provide this information and give out phone numbers as well. Now, another thing that they should have is a portfolio showing their work results and also the return on investment that they were able to deliver to the business owner. So another item that they should feature is they should have a concern when they talk with you about whether it's by email or video conferencing, they should have a real concern for helping you expand into new markets and accelerate growth and increase your profits. If they don't ask you about these things, then, they're probably not a good fit for actually helping you get these things done. So next up is what are the necessary skills that the freelancer should demonstrate? So in this section, you see they should be able to build business plans and marketing plans very specifically with you. They're going to want to know what are your business plans? What are your marketing goals? What are your key performance indicators? How do you define success? Do you have a business plan? Do you have a, a digital marketing plan? If they don't ask you these things, that's a red flag to me. They should have experience with SEO, e-commerce, and online marketing. So what is SEO for those who don't know? SEO stands for search engine optimization, and it is how you outrank competitors in online search. They should also want to talk with you about content marketing and have real experience in content marketing. So again, for those who don't know, content marketing is how you use 
the website content, your blog posts, your downloads, your uh, ebooks and courses and checklists and all the other material, they should want to talk to you about your content marketing plan, what type of content you already have available, how they can help you grow more of this content and focus this type of content more so it, it serves the problems that your ideal consumer has. And they should be able to work with large teams, whether your business is small or if it's large and you have multiple departments, they should be able to interface with them effectively. So next is the big 500 pound gorilla in the room that is really the number one reason why most businesses fail to use digital marketing effectively, and that's budget. Business owners should be willing and able to invest a few thousand dollars to get started, just as you would if you were to put an ad in a local newspaper or a commercial on a local a TV affiliate or on Hulu or YouTube for a few months. To think that you could have a professional online presence that's going to be mobile friendly and show up in Google for less than a few grand is not realistic. So whoever it is that you decide to work with, they should say Mr. or Miss service provider or Mr. or Miss uh, business owner my budget starts at two to three thousand dollars at a minimal and then we can talk about other things or they'll ask you about your budget range but you as the business owner you need to be able and willing to invest in order to make more you you've heard the expression a million times that you have to spend money to make money and even today in 2021 if if you want to put an ad in a local newspaper, it's going to cost you several grand. They're going to want a multiple month commitment from you. And obviously, if you were to put money into advertising in a uh, billboard, uh, the big giant billboards you see above the interstates, those are more expensive. If you want to put an ad in the yellow pages, if they're even still around, it's going to be even more than that. If you want to advertise on Hulu or uh, many of the other um, channels on the streaming services today, that's going to be even more expensive. So the more you want to accomplish, the more you should expect a budget. And I was recently a guest on a podcast and the podcast guest asked me, well, what about guarantees? And what I pointed out to him was the fact that if you put an ad in a newspaper they can't guarantee you results. They can't guarantee that your phone will ring off the hook. They can only show you, well, here's how many readers we have. They can't guarantee how many people are going to work with you because they don't know if you're going to answer the phone. They don't know anything about how organized or disorganized your business is, how adept you are providing services, how regularly you get back to people, if you're ready to scale or not. So, whether it's a newspaper, on radio, television, streaming provider, YouTube, whatever it is, they can't guarantee you that you're going to achieve your desired outcomes. They can't and they shouldn't. What they can do is provide you other information and tell you that based on other similar businesses, here's what we're able to do. But it, again, it's not realistic to ask them, can you guarantee me that I'm going to achieve this specific outcome that I want? They, they cannot and they will not. And also when we talk about budget, you should expect to pay 50 to 60% upfront to begin working with a professional. Obviously, they're not going to begin working for you for free or on spec where they do some work for free and then if you're happy you pay them the real world doesn't work like that so you want to work in a realistic way the doctor isn't going to treat you for free the uh, the mechanic won't fix your car for free the dentist won't fix your choppers for free so don't ask anyone who's professional to work for free uh, either so next up what should you ask freelancers what type of questions? So since the proliferation of do-it-yourself 
quote unquote free template builders since these began. And we've had freelance marketplaces uh, that are very popular. Business owners usually will go for super cheap or bargain offerings. It's almost impossible for them to resist the lure of something for nothing or the promise of, an, you know, this is an easy out to this problem. And as I've said before, business owners usually end up with empty templates that don't help them go to the top of Google. They don't help them gain greater visibility or increase profits. They just have an empty template in most cases. So what should you ask a professional, experienced freelancer who is adept at digital marketing? So you should ask about their experience. How long have you been in business? Usually if it's under five years, watch out. And it's the same for business owners on the flip side of that. Usually statistically, if they've been in business for less than five years, they're still in that learning growth phase and the likelihood of them disappearing is greater. So you want to look for someone who's been in business for at least five years in general. Next, you want to ask them what types of clients do they typically work with and why? If they don't know, or don't have an answer for you, this should be a point of concern. Another question to ask, how many clients have they worked with thus far? So if you were to ask me, I would tell you several hundred over the course of 20 to 25 years, I could give you a list of maybe my top five or direct you to my portfolio page or, or, you know, my testimonials or something of that nature. But they should have at least 20 or more than just a few. Another question to ask them, do they have references that they can show you or testimonials from verifiable sources? Next up, practices. What do they do and how do they do it? Do they have relationships with preferred vendors? So for me, for example, I have preferred uh, e-commerce vendors who I like. I have preferred vendors for SEO uh, and for local directory services who are very, very, no uh, very well established and very well known. Do they have a portfolio of live sites that they can show you? If not, you might be their first. Do they have a process for screening clients and on, on and then for onboarding clients? And that's uh, onboarding refers to how they train you or show you how they work, their process. Can they also help you with automation, SEO, and e-commerce? Very important. Next, you want to ask them about their business acumen or how they work. Do they have any experience working for agencies? Can they, they, can they show you case studies to demonstrate results as we touched on before? And again, do they screen on board clients and do they use contracts? If they don't or they say no to these things, then that should be a cause for concern because contracts work for you, the business owner, as well as for the freelancer, because both parties know what's to be expected. What are the rules of the road? When there are no rules, then both parties can pretty much do anything at any time. And it's not really a place you want to be. And finally, when we talk about finding your freelance fit, let's talk about where do you find freelancers? So now that we know how to tell competent and experienced freelancers from neighborhood hobbyists, generally what to budget and what to ask. Let's discuss where to find freelancers who can help you accomplish your goals. It's vital to remember that in this process, we need to focus not on cheap prices, but more on whether or not the person you're communicating with can actually help you reach your desired outcomes, such as increasing sales, outranking your competitors in online search, and increasing website traffic. So where can you find freelancers? Well, you can go to Indeed. You can uh, create a job listing there if you want, but you can also 
look through applicants. You can go to LinkedIn, which is a great source for professionals and look through their job history and experience and testimonials as well. Another website that's very uh, capable is Media Bistro. You can also Google what you need specifically and see who shows up in your local demographics, if that's important to you. Now, in August of 2021, a lot of people believe that COVID is real. They don't want to risk getting it. So they prefer to work remotely and do video conferencing. Um, in many cases, a lot of people don't believe it's much of an issue, don't worry about it, don't care one way or the other, and they want to meet other people face to face. So depending on where you feel with that, if local face to face interactions are paramount to you, then you would want to go to Google and just type in what it is you're specifically looking for and then see who comes up locally. Now, another resource is your local chamber of commerce. They should also have listings of uh, businesses locally. Other websites are Behance, Dribble, Mashable. Those are all good sites to find professionals. Next, another way to find freelancers are to look for organizations and groups. AIGA is a good organization to look for copywriting and content creation. The Society for Professional Journalists is a great resource. Um, I used to be a member and I think I still have a page with them on their website. Another great source is the Content Marketing Institute and the Public Relations Society of America. Now some tips of the trade. Post a job on Indeed or LinkedIn. Be amenable, be open to being contacted by the person and saying, hey, look, are you open to having a discussion about your goals to see if we're a good fit? Many times I've seen positions on LinkedIn where, again, the person posting the uh, the job or the listing only wanted the cheapest possible number he, he or she could find. They didn't want to discuss their objectives or goals. They didn't want to talk about that at all. They just want to know how much for a template and they go with the cheapest, lowest possible number, irregardless of whether or not that person can actually help them. So they, they're not even open to discussing whether or not uh, they have goals or what their goals may be or talking to you on a human level. They just want the lowest number. That's not who I want to work for. And that's not how you can find a experienced professional freelancer to help you. You want to be clear about offering realistic wages. Um, you know, sometimes if you play with your cards too close to your vest and don't want to say what your budget is, in many cases, someone who's very experienced will just cut bait and go somewhere else and just say, look, if, if they won't tell me what their budget range is, there's no way for me to know if what they want is realistic or if their expectations are tenable. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave and go somewhere else. So you want to be clear about offering a realistic uh, wage or budget range for what you want to achieve. The more clear and open you are to discourse and conversation, the, the more easy it's going to be for you to find someone who's really serious about what they do as well. Finally, and related to this, you want to work with someone and you want to be as clear as possible on achieving outcomes rather than focusing on, I just need a website. I just need someone to break my, uh, to fix my broken template or how can I do this all myself? You want to focus in on achieving outcomes and they, the freelancer, the digital marketing should also focus in on achieving your desired outcomes rather than tools as well. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. To learn more, visit www.dms.blue. And I'll also add a link to the related blog post as well. So thanks so much for your time. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more video content. Thanks a lot, everybody, and stay safe.